Namaskar, Maharishika Ji. Namaskar, Salt. My question is about my very deep experience about anxiety and depression. It just periodically comes to my life. I, I don't know what to do with it. When I was at the satsang in Rishikesh, that time I started to practice the Samarpan, but uh, during the last weeks just came to my life again and it's affect my all my system. There is one way of approaching all of this, which is, of course, to deepen the surrender. That is the key, and it has to be done physically. Like, whenever you can, set a timing, go down on your knees, stretch out fully on the floor, stretch your arms out, cupping your hands, and actually asking for grace, asking for this body to be an instrument, you know, of the soul. That is the key. You cannot be depressed if you do that, it just cannot, it's not possible in those moments to be depressed. But what happens is that when you, if you, if you reduce the number of times in a day you're doing that, then that, that feeling can come back again. There are of course many, many reasons why a system gets into that state. And, and we can try to look at a few of them. One of them is the giving state of that body, that instrument. Is that instrument called Zolt in a giving state? And what is that giving that is happening? Because the more you give, the less the chances of getting into a state of anxiety or depression. In fact, that's one of the uh, big issues faced by millennials. They cannot get out of those anxious states because they've not learned how to give. They don't even know what giving is. It's all about absorbing and taking in. And, and when one starts to train the system to give, this anxiety and depression goes down. Societies around the world, over the millennia, have always pushed to have children to procreate. That's where the giving is learned, and that's why people who have children are less prone to those things. I'm not saying entirely, you know, this is not set in stone, but generally are less prone to those kind of feelings of anxiety and depression. You just don't have the, the time for it because you have this being you have to take care of. Which leads me to the question, why is it that you don't have a child? You, you look strong to me, I've seen you, I remember you very well in the satsangs in Rishikesh, although you know there are hundreds of people and there's, you know, days and days and days, months of it that go on. But I remember you, and my question is, why does a man like you, unless there's a medical reason for it, not have children? Actually, I don't know. I always felt I, I'm not ready for this. But nobody is ready. I don't think there's a single person, a single man on this planet, who happily jumps up and down in the morning and says, I'm ready and let's have kids. No, that's not how it works. Men have to make themselves ready. It is the duty of a human being to procreate whenever possible, of course, not everybody can. But I'm not ready, I'm not sure of my partner, I'm not this, I'm not that. And then in the end you're anxious and depressed, and that's not the way to go forward. Also, what is the idea you have about yourself? As a man, you, you live in Europe, right? I think you live in Hungary, if I'm not mistaken. Yes? Yes. Sometimes I wonder where I pull out all those things from my memory. And, and you know, that's Europe, you're there, I mean, what reason is there for so many men of your age, younger than you also, not to want to take up any responsibility whatsoever for another person? If you would take that up and say, okay, I'll just take that risk, I'll, I mean, it's not a risk, you have a child, you have a child, you're a father, then you have things to do, you have a responsibility for someone, how then would things go? I mean, it is a risky business in today's day and age, but if people learn how to be a bit more giving, how to be a bit more 
compromising, how to be a bit more, you know, diplomatic. I know these are harsh words in the context of a relationship, but they have some meaning, and this will give you meaning in your life also. Because it is a duty towards society to raise children, and if spiritual seekers refuse to raise children, then what are we expecting in the next generation? What are we looking at in Europe, as an example? So, my question to you is that, but apart from that, the surrender practice on a daily basis, 10, 15, 20, 30 times, do it for a week and it's going to go away. You don't have to take medication for this, you don't have to think too much, just get on on your knees, stretch your arms out, and, and you know, someone like you, you are a spiritual seeker, what seva are you doing? What are you doing for others? What are you contributing to a spiritual work? You know, those are the things to do. Or even to social service, even in the church, wherever you are, near you, it doesn't really matter what the institution is, but take it up. So, take up something concrete, and shed that thing, wash your face, slap yourself twice, and say, okay, so enough is enough now, and yeah, I know I'm feeling depressed, but I'm not going to listen to it. I'm going to do my Sashtanga Namaskars, I'm going to make a little plan for what I can do every day to do something for society and for others, and I'm going to try and make a short-term plan to have children, and then, by the way, bring them also to see us in Rishikesh or in Goa. Yeah, that's the way, you know, there's no time to think about things and, oh, and something is wrong with me, and no, nothing is wrong with you, I've seen you, nothing is wrong with you. You're a strong, healthy man, with, with quite a, a deep understanding of life and of other people, so I don't see why you're here sitting and, and whining about depression, no, stop it right away. Wash your face, say, no, this is not going to happen, I'm going to take up something to do, and I'm going to also do it. And if anyone tries to put you down, and tries to say, you're not really a man, you haven't done this, you're not that, just say, stop complaining, and I'm not listening to this anymore. Because women tend to do that sometimes, to, you know, to attack the manliness of a man, or to... You just have to become tough, and keep her in line, and that's how men have to be. And then you won't have this depression. Did your grandfather have depression? No, exactly. Did he have anxiety? Oh my God, I don't know what's going on with me. No, because he had children, he did his job, he kept his woman in line, kept himself in line in the first place, and that's what a spiritual life is. And every day to be more and more an instrument of Truth, in every action, and you do that by standing there and saying, is this the thing for me to do? Is it the ego propelling this action, or is it the Truth? It is not rocket science, the spiritual path, it's tough. It's tougher than, you know, going to the Moon, I understand that, but it's doable. So, pull yourself together, and stride on. This life is a beautiful, amazing thing, it's a rare thing in the universe to have an experience of living. So we have to enjoy it also, and this is how you enjoy it. Surrender, 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 surrender. Stretch out a few times a day. Stretch those arms out, go down on your knees. Stretch those arms out, those hands cupped, receiving. Make a decision to give something every day. Take up a seva. And then I'd like to see how depressed you are. It'll be a few, it'll be a few hours, it's over after that. This is exactly what many people, especially men, are having to endure at the moment, because things have gone awry in the world, nobody knows their place anymore. It's also transformative, I'm not saying it's all bad, but it's also a good idea to just find your place and stand there, strong, as a spiritual seeker and a spiritual finder. Be all right, it'll be all right, just do what I'm saying, and then you'll see. Yes. Thank you, Namaskar. Namaskar, Zolt. We invite you to a live online satsang with Maharishika Preeti this Sunday. To know more, click the link in the description below.